we're being transported in time this evening, Mark we of the Devil, yes. back to 1970. Yes, uh, I've been dug up, specially exhumed as a retro, uh, in order to introduce Mark of the Devil, which some people won't have seen, and others have probably seen more than I have, uh, actually. <laughs> um, it's rather amazing, because when I saw the, the programme, which is extraordinary for Friday Fest, it really is a wonderful, wonderful thing, um, they're all... Uh, they all seem to be film premieres of movies and of, of new people. I think that's, that's so good. And so, because it, it's the future, that's the future. And there's me suddenly, you know, <laughs> stuck there, you know, as, as doing my mark of the dog, which I feel actually rather flattered about, to be honest. It's rather charming. Well, it's lovely. It's, it's, a, it's like a mark of respect, isn't it, really? Well, it's a sort of mark of the devil, mark of respect, I suppose, yes. Or just sheer torture, you know, for anybody who sort of feels that way. <laughs> you can't beat the old techniques, basically. Well, yes, you can, because the whole point about technique is it develops uh, by generation, one after another. And um, what, what is rather nice, actually, is that something which I think now, by modern filmmaking sense, sort of creaks in one sense, uh, as most films of that period would, um, is still holding up and still has something to say to, to generations who weren't even born when it was made. And that, that actually means something, it really does. It's, it's, it's a nice, I think, oh, well, you know, maybe I had a, you know, I feel I've done something a bit, you know. Well, was it about the story when you, when you first read the script that, that just you connected with and you just thought, you know what, I really want to helm this and make it? Well, the first script I was offered to direct was called um, The Witch Hunter Dr. Dracula. And there was absolutely nothing whatsoever with it that was connected, other than I do not want to know anything about this awful, awful, awful movie. Um, but I got, uh, at least permission, to write what I wanted to write. So I took the basic idea, which was the witch hunting of that period, and I looked at and I thought, right, let me research this properly. And it had to be on a fairly short time. And I went into researching the torches and, and what was going on there. And what really hit me were two things. One, the whole hypocrisy of it, and, and the much bigger um, uh, issue of the state when it takes over is far worse than little localised amateurs, because it's an organised thing. And that's a perennial problem right through history, as we all know, and it's around today. Um, the people in power, when they take over, God help it, the ordinary people. Um, and the other thing that hit me was the crassness of the brutality that they used. Whereas I'd always slightly thought it was a bit more sophisticated. And maybe the ideas are, but the actual usage of them was horrid. And so I wanted to put an audience through uh, a, a period of really seeing just one after another after another, these dreadful, brutal, crude things that people can do to each other in the name of God. There's so much intensity in that, isn't it, really? And when you're, when you're working then with your actors and knowing that there's so much truth involved with what you're doing, how, do you have to be extra sensitive to what they're having, having to go through, really? No, I actually had to, had to be extra bilingual because we had about seven languages operating on it. So in, in the years of like uh, Herbert Lahm and Udo Kier and so and Oliver Richer, uh, they could speak, and Reggie Nolder, um, yes, they, they could speak English, so I could communicate with them completely. But one or two of the um, artists playing small roles, like Gabby Fuchs, for instance, um, who is the most tortured lady in the film, um, uh, she couldn't speak English, uh, and I couldn't speak German. And so I had to communicate, and very often uh, Adrian Herbert, the producer, who admittedly we were having feuds with, but he would step in and do translations and, and communicate what I was trying to say for those moments or areas. Uh, but, and also for the big crowd scenes, again, there's no way I could stand up and say, I want this, this and this. So he would then step in and help me out there. But other than that, uh, yes, I spoke in English and they spoke in English and that was fine. But in terms of communicating what was required, it's no more than any other film you'd make. Excluding comedy, which requires a very definite process of technique. But other than that, it was characters and it was what they're about and the psychology and the moment where they're coming from and so on. And 
when the film was released, it was banned. And so for you as a filmmaker who's passionately made this film as well, how does that, how does that affect you when you've made this for an audience and they're not going to see it? Well, it was banned in certain places and edited in other places. Um, it opened in Germany to colossal... Uh, in fact, basically, whenever it opened, it did huge, huge business. It was very, very controversial. Uh, and either at Cannes, when it was originally screened there, uh, they had actually... That's when the first idea of having to have people from ambulances and nurses <laughs> coming in to cope with it, because there'd really been nothing like it at all. Um, in America, when it went, it um, played on that, and it was sold incredibly with vomit bags. It was a, what a brilliant promotional uh, um, uh, way of doing things. Uh, I, I met the, 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 um, uh, the, the distributor of that years later, and uh, <clears throat> he said, you yeah, know, I came up with vomit bags. And I said, was brilliant. I said, what gave you the idea? He said, well, I bought the film, and I was kind of flying back, and I thought, how am I going to sell this? And then I looked at the sick bag, and I thought, hey, that's it. <laughs> and it was a wonderful marketing coup, really. Um, so that worked really well for it and helped push it. Um, here it was just banned outright. Well, they wanted 25 minutes worth of cuts. And I did a radio interview at the time where they said, well, is there anything in it that might really upset people in terms of violence. I said, yes, about 90 minutes worth. <laughs> um, so that, they, 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 here it was just, out of, and John Trevelyan, the, the censor then, was a very, very good friend of mine, actually, and he helped me get my first feature. He was a lovely man. But even that, he just could not, it was beyond. And they'd set up a, a, a big premiere idea and everything over here that they were going to do in uh, the old pavilion cinema in, in Peter's Circus. And they had to cancel it to the lot. And it was just no way. And even the GLC wouldn't allow it through. And it's been like that up until, well, officially, really, until tonight. Um, this is, I think this is probably the first official public screening of the uncut version. 40 years later. 40 years later. Um, there'll be one or two sort of secret ones. But other than that, no. It, 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 it was still officially publicly banned in its, entire, in its entirety, which is amazing. I mean, I think it was ridiculous, but then I would. Um, I mean, I didn't make it for that reason. And uh, I, was, I was very surprised when it happened. Um, but I also had this in my first feature, uh, Haunted House of Horror, um, when I did killings that were actually allowed through with a, probably a couple of cuts, which at the time were apparently the bloodiest in those types of pictures. Um, but I didn't think of it like that. I just did what I wanted to upset an audience. I don't think you should show violence that is anything other than upsetting. Because it's, and, and so I always try to do it from the victim's point of view, rather than the perpetrator, which I think is the way it should be. Interestingly, with Mark the Devil and with Haunted House and all of them, I'm about to start publishing the original screenplays of everything I've ever written right through as a collector's set to build up into I think it's about 40, including things that were not filmed before, like the, the Sex Pistols film that was going to go and then didn't because they broke up and things like that. Um, so that, I think, for the fans, might be quite interesting um, because then they can really go, oh, wow, this is actually, you know, sort of, and Mark will, of course, be amongst that as well.